roundtable discussion today. I'm Debbie Statler, Editor-in-Chief of Provider Magazine, and I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Let's start with some simple introductions, name, company, where you come from, and maybe how many years you've been in long-term care. Mary, do you want to start? Sure. Um, my name is Mary Adams. I'm the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at Genesis. Um, I'm also the Clinical Risk Manager. Um, the VP of Clinical Risk Management, excuse me. Um, I've been in long-term care over 25 years. I've been with Genesis since 2017. Well, I'm Paul Martin. I'm Vice President of Health and Wellness for Trust One Episcopal Home in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I have been in this business right at 30 years. Hello, I'm Samantha Taylor. I'm the Director of Assisted Living at Forest Hills of DC. And I've been in long-term care for nine years. I previously, before that, had a career in government. And I'm Steve Woods, um, Regional Director of Operations for Guarded Management Solutions, um, based in Illinois. And I uh, have been in senior living for about 18 years. Now, you all are scholars in ACA's new program, the Diversity Equity Leadership Program. What was it that interested you about the program? What made you want to get involved? And what are you hoping to get out of it? Steve, do you want to start? Sure. Um, our company, Guardant Management, um, actually just um, recently started a DEI program um, within the company, actually. Um, so that initially got me interested um, in this as well. And then I think as you identify senior living in our industry as a whole, um, definitely think that um, there needs to be that intentional um, effort um, for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I really feel that this was a great opportunity to um, learn from others in the industry and then also take back to my own company and, and grow our DEI within, within Garden. Now Mary, DEI is in your title. Oh, so. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So we recently started a DEI program in 2020. However, the position was new for me. So in February, I was um, given the title of VP of DEI. And so I was already um, in the position as the interim chair of our committee. So this kind of fell in my lap and I was very um, interested in learning more about what ACA had to offer and what you know ACA Incal had to offer because I, I understand that ACA Incal has always been the biggest advocate of our industry. So I felt like the um, it, it just was natural for me to want to learn from the leaders in the industry and kind of just network with individuals who can take me to the next level. For me, it's more of an individual personal growth opportunity. And so I'm coming from Washington, D.C., from a small independent organization. And learning about myself, developing myself as a leader uh, and as a future in long-term care, as I just you know, started in this business and looking forward to uh, a future in long-term care, as I grow, I like to take a look at the opportunities that are available and also be an example for those who are coming uh, behind us as we are the first uh, mm -hmm. DELP group is what they call it. I wanted to create an opportunity not for myself to learn and grow but also be a part of an opportunity for folks behind us in years to come to see that we did it now. Here's an opportunity for you as well. We're starting to see the graying of the LGBT community and so we do have some of those um, residents at Tresman. And so how do we prepare not only the staff, but how do we prepare the residents um, for this influx that's about to hit? And so looking at how do we not only prepare our residents, but as Samantha said, you know, how do we create this next generation that really respects everybody's um, ideals and um, true authentic identity? And how do we make sure that those are um, have a voice and have a place at the table. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to what you said about personal growth, what are the leadership skills that you think we need most today? And then are those the same skills that we're going to need down the road as all of these changes and demographics and things come along? I think one, one point that we need to focus on is cultural inclusivity mm -hmm. and language in which promotes inclusivity and also respects diversity. A lot of times, you know, you hear communications come out and it doesn't really hit home for everyone. And so you want to be able to communicate where uh, to a broader audience mm -hmm. where it can be in touch with the broader audience but still effective 
communication. So I think that is one of the main points that, and that's what I look forward to, is learning that language that is inclusive, that is welcoming, that is diverse, so that people feel welcomed to this to conversations with myself, conversations in this community, and in the profession. Mm -hmm. Communication, that's one skill that never is not needed. <laughs> right. <laughs> and are there leadership skills that you're hoping to gain from this, or skills that you think are gonna be important as we go forward? There are. Um, in addition to what Samantha said, I think uh, not only affirming, but welcoming, and making sure that everybody feels welcome regardless of their um, diversity or um, persona. So having that as a leadership skill, how do we create that culture? How do we create that atmosphere that allows people, both residents and staff, to be their true authentic self and to come um, with all the good and the bad that comes with that and making sure that we have a place um, for those people both in our residence rooms but also um, on our staff. In addition to inclusive leadership, I think it's really important as a leader to make sure, especially in this DEI um, you know, era that we're in, um, it's important to make sure you're not excluding people while you're making sure that we are trying to include everyone. Because it's really easy for that group of individuals to feel as though we don't belong because we are not the minority or we're not the you know, marginalized groups. So it's really important to make sure that everyone feels a part of this continuum and not to exclude anyone in the process. So I, I, I think that that's something that um, I want to develop in myself um, as well as to develop in others. Everything is so important, um, communication, inclusion. Um, I'm just really looking forward to the opportunity to not only train my administrators, my management teams, but also my residents. Right, and I think Paul, you had mentioned um, er earlier, you know, um, that that acceptance of you know somebody's moving in, they're going to be next door, and and re really being able to um, educate um, the, the the residents just as much as my staff. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. That's a great point. So diversity, equity, and inclusion has gotten a lot of attention. Uh, is it getting enough attention? Is it getting too much attention? Are we touching a little bit on DE&I fatigue maybe? Or are people being taken by other topics as top priority? Are we giving enough attention? What do you think, Steve? Um, I don't think there can be enough attention <laughs> put on DE&I, um, obviously. Um, but um, seriously, I mean, it's, it's, you're, you're hearing that now so often, right? Um, my company, your company, you know, there, there, there's various companies that are just doing that because they've identified it within their own company, like, hey, we want to do, we want to be a leader, you right, in, in DE&I, and I, and, and um, I just don't think that you can do it enough, and um, the, the more um, information that can be passed on and the more the light can be shown on DE&I, I, I think um, is going to make um, everybody just, our, our profession just really flourish. And I would like to add, if I can, um, I agree with everything you're saying. I think it cannot be discussed enough. Mm -hmm. What I think is necessary now is what's being discussed be put into action. Mm -hmm. Because now yes. people have gained the knowledge. It's a common topic now that's being talked about and positions are being created. But how do we see it in our everyday organizations, mm -hmm. in our community, and again, our communication? The applied action is what I think needs more. Mm -hmm than just the conversations. Absolutely. And that begs the question, how well are we doing with that action as DEI leaders in the long-term care sector? Are we doing well? Are there areas that we can do better? One of the biggest things is to make sure that we are looking for those opportunities to bring those people into leadership positions and how do we identify um, places to go and where do we reach out to um, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think um, through all sectors of the senior community, there's absolutely a need for people to be in leadership positions that have that insight and to have that knowledge and to have that as part of the culture that they're creating for their companies. Because as we have said over and over again, um, staff are becoming more diverse. Staff are becoming um, demanding of equality. And, I think you're going to start seeing that with our residents as well. And so as leaders, we are 
challenged and tasked with bringing this to fruition through action, through dialogue, um, and through making sure that our communities um, represent the communities that we live in. Mm -hmm. Mary, where are you seeing some successes? Oh, just, <laughs> just, the, just the discussion yeah. is a success to me. Um, we had a conversation the other day and we talked about, just a few years ago, you wouldn't even talk about some of the things we're talking about now um, in the workplace. So um, I see a lot of successes in the conversation, just opening up um, opportunities for even our patients as well as Paul is saying, you know, our patients have those expectations of, you know, meeting their needs from a cultural perspective. You know, we have a lot of transgender patients coming into our facilities. We need to be prepared for that. So I see a lot of successes, you know, in our company. Um, we are very actionable, very, very actionable. I, I don't think it's enough to just say you have a DEI program. You have to have the action behind it and you have to have the buy-in. You have to con be continuous in that process. So we see a lot of success and I'm looking forward to more success, you know, in just keeping things going. Now, it's interesting that we've talked about sort of two different sections of DE&I, that whole leadership and your staff and building that next generation of leaders, but also the residents mm -hmm. and the diversity of residents and the things that they might be expecting or are wanting from long-term care. So where can leaders make the most impact on those two groups? What are the things that leaders can really do to start changing the DE&I that we have now into something even better? I think our messaging has to be, you know, clear and concise at all times. Um, you know, I, I think from the top on down, you know, as long as the messaging is clear and as long as we're actionable, as long as we are involving our patients and our families and um, being transparent and intentional, I think that we we will see, you know, significant change over the years. Um, DEI is here to stay. So I really think that um, we as an industry have already made um, changes. I mean, look at us. We're here now and, you know, ACA is doing, you know, amazing things for us um, from the DELP perspective. So I think that as we continue to have dialogue, as we continue to be actionable and just make sure that, um, again, we're not just a check the box. I'm, I feel very strongly about that and our organization does. And so we have the buy-in from our boardroom to our centers. And I'm proud of that because it's very important to really have initiatives and actions and, you know, not just talk to talk but walk the walk and you know that's what we're doing. I think it's very important that we continue to educate and make sure that there's uh, cultural competencies mm -hmm. and uh, cultural organization competencies in our communication and our common language and our practices. I mean it starts with the questions of how do you, the resident or the staff, how do you identify yourself? Mm -hmm. Tell me more. What, you know, what makes you diverse? Like, what, what do you identify with? Absolutely. And I think that grows into a more open conversation mm -hmm. and that open-mindedness mm -hmm. will then help, you know, that person-centered care and the outcomes mm -hmm. in the long run. That connection is so important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Steve, in your organization, where is leadership going to make the most difference? Sure, um, I would also agree education, um, but I think respect, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think re respect of everybody that, 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 is, that is in our building, that, that's our leaders, that's our families, that's our residents, um, our community partners. Um, just that respect of, okay, this is, I'm going to respect where you are, right? And, uh, and just be understanding of that. And, and so I really think that um, that's what we really look at is just the, the, the word respect. Now, Paul, you mentioned that staff members are wanting equality and sort of demanding that. So. Is DE&I kind of leadership top down, or is DE&I bottom up, or both? Where do you see that happening? Leaders need to set the example, and we need to be the change that we want to see in our industry, but we can't do it sitting in ivory towers or in silos. We have to involve our staff and our frontline staff, and we've got to make them a part of any change that's gonna happen. And so I think one of the biggest things um, from a perspective that we've done recently is we've looked at our board and we've 
um, gone from a very white male board to a very diverse board that we've pulled a lot of people in. And I think that just shows the um, commitment that Tresman has made to put into practice what we say is important to us. So let's look down the road a little bit. Like you mentioned, we're already way ahead of where we were two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Where do we see this going in five or 10 years? Uh, what are some of the things that you hope we've accomplished by then? For me, I hope we see culture change in the way uh, when we come to these meetings and in our organizations, we see more acceptance and like Steven said, respect, mm -hmm. respect and open-mindedness. That's what I hope to see. Mm -hmm. I would love to see not a need for, our, for the DELP program. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, when you walk into the room and it's, it's just automatically there, um, I think, you know, right now it needs to be intentional as we discussed before, but I think maybe in five or 10 years, you know, it's, it just evolves. And, um, you know, that, that's, that, that's my far 10 year goal, but, um, you know, hopefully we'll get to that point. <laughs> be so successful we work ourselves out of a job for that. I love that idea. That sounds perfect. Yeah. I would love to you know see some of this not needed. Mm -hmm. um, however I think you know I think it will still be needed but I, I would love to see more people as change agents you know really feeling as though they are not just sitting and waiting or that DEI doesn't impact them. There's a lot of people who don't think, you know, DEI impacts them. So I think that, you know, as we move forward, individuals, you know, hopefully will jump on and become change agents and want to see changes in all in our communities as well as in our workplace. So I, I'm hoping to see that in the future. One thing I think that I would like to see is as we develop this and as we do this in most of our um, associations, we have administrators groups and DON groups and activity groups and social workers. I really would love it if we had a DEI, so whether it's, you know, you're focused on handicapped or Hispanic or um, LGBTQ or African American, just so that that can bring some of those people together and that we can mentor and lead and help encourage those to carry on what we're starting here. And so I would love to be able to say, you know, 10 years down the road that every state association not only has their affiliates, but they have their DEI chapters as well. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. Well, I am extremely inspired by everything that you guys have mentioned today and for your experience for the Diversity Executive Leadership Program. I think you guys are going to do great things and I look forward to hearing about it. And thank you for spending time with us today. Thank, thank you. you.